This week it was announced that the Grenfell Tower inquiry would hold its first public hearings in September as it prepares to begin to examine what caused the tragedy. But some have warned that the situation now needs to be depoliticized or it will damage the search for answers. In a moment we're going to hear from the Labour MP for Kensington where the Grenfell Tower fire took place. But first Emma Vardy looks at how political arguments have played a significant part in the aftermath of this terrible event. When you come here and you actually see it, your immediate thoughts are about the people, not about the politics. What happened up there is just so difficult to comprehend. But in the days after this tragedy, there was such outrage at governments and authorities. It became a political storm that those in power struggled to respond to. We want justice! We want justice! We want justice! People vented their anger outside Kensington Town Hall. Because we have the capability to feel. A visit to the Grenfell site by Theresa May saw her forced to leave under police guard. At Prime Minister's questions, Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn linked the tragedy Speaker, with spending cuts. The point which seems to... What the tragedy of Grenfell Tower has exposed is the disastrous effects of austerity. And speaking at Glastonbury, Shadow Chancellor John McDonnell used even stronger terms. Those families, those individuals, 79 so far, and there'll be more, were murdered by political decisions that were taken over recent decades. And I can't remember uh, a major national tragedy that has been politicised in such a, uh, uh, an overt way. I think using the terms like murder is, is, is completely reckless at a time like this. The key thing is that we try and ascertain the facts of, of what happened and how this tragedy occurred to ensure it, it, it can never be repeated. And as soon as you introduce emotive phrases or emotive accusations or emotive allegations of, of that nature, then the discourse becomes politicised, the whole debate around the tragedy becomes politicised and it makes it much, much harder to, to get to the truth. Some argue the political language that was used was wrong and helped to ramp up the vitriol in an unhelpful way. But for others, it was entirely justified. That's what an opposition party is for. It's to challenge the government um, and to ask the right questions. And I think people around here would say, thank goodness, there's somebody in politics who's speaking for us. Pilgrim Tucker had helped Grenfell Tower residents campaign for building improvements in previous years and returned to help after the tragedy. I mean, I went to meetings before the fire and I've been to meetings since the fire, but attended by ordinary residents with no involvement in politics. And they are saying very, very political things about land in London and property ownership in London and their sense of place. Had we campaigned harder, would we have prevented this? Fire safety campaigners say they were trying to draw attention to certain issues long before what happened at Grenfell Tower and say it's no one political party, but the whole system that's failed. Well, it's easy to say, you've got an inquiry, let's wait for that. We already know two very clear things. Had the people there been protected by sprinklers, nobody would have died. People don't die in homes protected by sprinklers. The second thing is the outrage that the building regulations have not been updated in way over a decade. They should be done year in, year out. Generally, people in house fires die in ones, twos or threes, which doesn't make a political statement. So the political parties haven't really needed to do anything about it. They weren't prepared for this. They weren't prepared for 70 or more people to die at once in this flaming disaster. The public inquiry, which will address some of those issues, has already faced calls for its newly appointed chair to resign. And that was a view echoed by the Labour MP for Kensington, Emma Dent Code. You would call on him, would you, to, to stand down? I, I don't think he should do it. I don't think um, there'll be any credibility. And some people are saying that they won't cooperate with it, so it's not going to work. I give you my word that I will look into this matter for the very best of my ability. And I think the, the, the attacks on the chair have to cease. I think the attacks on the inquiry have to cease. We have to let it do its job. It actually makes it harder to get to the facts and get to the truth, and that's the most important thing there. Some say it was unavoidable that this tragedy became political. But will the politics help get to the truth?
And I'm joined now by the Labour MP for Kensington, who we had at the end of the film there, Emma Dent Cove. Welcome to the Sunday Politics. Okay. Now, this uh, judge leading the Grenfell Inquiry, Martin Moore Bick, have you met him? I haven't met him, no. So, what evidence do you have that he doesn't, in your words, understand human beings? Well, I'm, I'm reflecting what people are telling me out there, that they, as soon as his name was announced, everybody looked up his, um, his credentials and so on. They found a, a particular case that he'd been involved in. The very issue that people are, are most worried about post Grenfell is that they'll be moved out of the borough somewhere else. This whole right. issue about social cleansing. And it was very right. insensitive to have chosen somebody with that on his record. Whether or not he made that decision according to the rules is irrelevant. It's one judgment in a long career, and he may well be able to defend uh, what he did. But you've said that he doesn't understand human beings, yet you've just told us that you've never met him. It's nothing to do with meeting him. Well, I don't approve of the otherwise? kind of system where, where people have to be friends to, in order to work together. Judge by, by the evidence, judge by what people have done. That's what, you know, judge by merit and not whether or not you but can be friendly. But what has he really done wrong in his career? Well, as I said, it's symbolic. The issue that he made a decision about is symbolic for everybody. It's not my judgment. But I'm reflecting the community so you who have been betrayed. But you don't think he then, in your own view, you don't take the view that he doesn't understand human beings. No, I do. do Personally, I do, do. But I do, actually. But I'm reflecting what people are saying, the people who elect me, the people who have been so badly betrayed by the authorities. That's how they see it. They've been betrayed and betrayed and betrayed. Um, and now they, they see, you know, their, their worst fear, which is that this will be used as an excuse to socially cleanse North Kensington, um, is being realised as far as they're concerned. What about social cleansing? No, but the, the, this will be used to do so. What's the well, evidence? Well, whether or not there is evidence, there is no trust in somebody who's been part of that process. Well, he's been chosen by the Lord Chief Justice. Yes. Not by the Prime Minister, as some have said. He's a long experience of commercial contracts and disasters. Mm. Both will be vital for the area of this inquiry. It's clearly a terrible disaster. It's also a lot to do with overlapping commercial contracts. Mm -hmm. He's a specialist in that area. Uh, what bit doesn't make him qualified and, and, uh, and doesn't he reflect the independence of the judiciary? Well, we certainly need somebody who can do the detail, but this is a human disaster as much as anything else. And we actually need somebody who can... We saw in the meeting there that there, there's a lot of anger and people aren't trusting. But that if, would be true. Don't... Whoever, of course, we all understand the anger, of mm. course. But that would be true. Who is ever chosen? I mean, are you really after... You, you, do you want someone to add up this inquiry? that will give you a, a show trial rather than an independent no, inquiry. It's exactly the opposite. Well, he's not going to give us a show trial, is he? Well, as I said, if there's no trust, people won't cooperate with him, and a lot of people will need to cooperate with him. Well, if they, some if of the at groups some that point... have said they won't cooperate are actually not involved. They're, they're, they're protest groups who, do, who are not representing the victims um, or the survivors. Uh, there, We have very little evidence that those who are directly affected by this are saying they're not going to, uh, to cooperate. Well, everybody who lives around there is a, is a victim to some extent. They've all been affected, myself as well. I live three blocks away from it. Um, and a lot of the groups are, are indeed very much involved in that community, not only the people who live there who survived, but certainly some of the uh, campaign groups have been campaigning for years about social housing in the area. So what sort of person would, do you think should head up the inquiry? Well, you know, if it has to be M Martin Morbick, we need some kind of panel, advisory panel, with representatives, representatives from different groups who can at least advise and feed in their information and so, so on. At least that, if we have no choice, we need at least that. But rather than him, what sort of person? Because I'm not quite sure now. Are you saying he should remain, but he needs to be assisted by a panel, or he should be replaced? Well, if we have no choice, mm. then we should have an advisory panel to back it up, something that people trust in. At the moment, they don't trust the process, which is understandable. I mean, his name was announced the same day as the Hill Hillsborough disaster, um, the uh, criminal investigation and so on, that after 28 years, this is, what peop this is how people see it. They, want, they don't trust the process. It's not going to work properly. It's not just what I think. It's what people who are directly involved think. John McDonald, the Shadow Chancellor, says that people who died at Grenfell were murdered by political decisions. Mm. Do you agree? Well, that's a pretty strong way of putting it. A lot of people are very angry. I know a lot of people feel like that. I, do, I think there's a massive failure of political decisions. And having mm. sat on the council for 11 years, then but, I've seen that happening. But murder is an active verb. 
Yeah. It means you intended to kill. So for Mr. McDonald to be right, these were political decisions taken intended to kill. And I don't share his view on that particular issue. Uh, there has been a failure of care for many, many years and a failure of investment for many, many years, as I've seen myself in but 11 they years had in the council. I mean, part of the problem has been investment. They had nine million pounds spent on this block. I was mm. looking at the block today. Yeah. The, the other uh, tar blocks around it have not been clad mm -hmm. because if they'd gone on fire, mm. the, dis the disaster would almost certainly not have been on the same scale. Well, the whole process... Nine million pounds yeah. helped to the produce whole, this. Indeed, the whole process of how that building was refurbished, it actually says in the planning application that it's to make it look better. There are ways, I mean, just half a mile down the road at Edward Woods Estate, next to Shepherd's Bush Roundabout, mm. the tower blocks there have been clad. They were clad in mineral wool. I spent a whole day at a seminar by chance um, understanding how that was happening. Mineral wool is entirely non-combustible. Who made that decision to use mm. rain, about, rain cladding rather than, rather than uh, mineral well, you wool. You were on I the board know. of the yeah. company that took yeah, the decision, weren't you? A minority party councillor has mm. absolutely no say. But did you raise it at the time? We had no say about the specification. We don't have don't. any involvement at all. We're it didn't way come out before you as part of the... Because it's got tenants on it too, hasn't it? Uh, what, the, the, the TMO does? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, 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 the advisory committee to the TMO. Uh, okay, there's the, the, the TMO, I was not on the TMO at the time, no. okay? And I think, uh, as far as I understand, a subgroup actually decided or reviewed the specifications of that. The Housing and Property Committee is part of the council, and as a minority party mm. councillor, obviously you have a say, but whether or not specific you know, we don't have any any say at all over specifications and i want to say something because i have been accused this of group be responsibility word, oh, on you go. that um be, because uh, my predecessor said that i should take group responsibility um a colleague of mine has actually got beaten up for that and that's not that's completely wrong i have there's absolutely no foundation at all for that allegation all right well I, thank you for, for clearing that, that up emma dent Cudden, thank you for joining us too now for viewers in london there will be more on the grenfell tower disaster in a moment on the sunday politics london